Okay, number nine, graph each function and state its domain and range. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph it. So I have the square root of x minus 3. And because it's minus 3 in the parentheses, I know that my graph is going to go to the right 3, and then outside the parentheses is plus 5. So I know it's going to go up 5. And there's my graph. I can see it starts at the point 3, 5. So on my graph I'm going to make on paper, because it says graph, that doesn't mean like on calculator, that means like on paper. I'm going to go, oh, uh-oh, calculator, come back. We're going to go 3, 5, so there we go. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm not so sure about any other points. So I'm going to go to second table. Oh, it's not start so low. There we go, 0. And I can see there's 3, 5. I have another good point at 4, 6. So we'll put that in. Do I have any others? Let's see. Um, oh, 7, 7. That's probably good. Four, five, six, seven. And there's my graph. Now I can see that my graph starts at three and goes to the right. So my domain is going to be all x values greater than or equal to three. My range, I'm going to look up and down for y values. And I can see that my first y value is at 5, and it's everything greater than or equal to 5, because it's 5 and higher, not 5 and lower. So the second one is the cube root of x plus 5. So I'm going to go back to y equals. I'm going to clear that out. And to get my cube root function, I'm going to go to math. And you can see there it is, number 4. So I have the cube root of x plus 5. So because it's plus 5 in parentheses, I know it's going to go to the left 5. So I have a point at oh, I have a point at negative 5, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I go to my table, I can see I also have a point. I should have one at negative 4, 1, it looks like. Let's see. Oh, 3, 2 is good. We'll put that one in. 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Wait. Let's see what else we got here. Yep, there's negative 4, 1. There's the one we know, 5, 0. And negative 6, negative 1. Why does it keep doing that? Silly slate. And so I'm going to fit my curve in like this. And I can see that my graph, the domain, it goes from left to right, covers every point. So my domain is all real numbers. My range might be a little harder to see. It does cover everything up and down. It just goes really slow. So the range there is all real numbers. Number 10, describe how to obtain the graph of G from the graph of F. Well, for a, f is just a regular square root function. I have this minus 5 inside, so I know that g is going to be right 5. And there's a negative outside the graph, which means we are going to have a reflection over the x-axis. Letter B has a plus 8 inside and a minus 2 outside. The plus 8 means we're going to go left 8. Lost the T. And the minus 2 means we're going to go down 2. Number 11. The approximate time in seconds it takes an object to fall a distance D in feet is, and we have this lovely equation. Sammy is parachuting and falls this many feet before she opens her parachute. How long does it take Sammy? Well, it says feet. And feet is the distance, and we're looking for the time. So we know it's going to be 0.92, the square root of 1 6th 
1,600 over 16. Now, before I pick up my calculator, I know that 1,600 divided by 16 is just 100. So I have 0.92 and then the square root of 100, which, aha, is 10. 0.92 times 10 is just going to be 9.2 seconds. Yay! All right, number 12. Number 12, a car traveling on Interstate 270 was involved in an accident. To approximate the speed of the car at the time of the accident, the police used the function, and there's the function, where S is speed and D is the length of the skid mark. The driver said he was traveling 40 miles an hour. What is the length of the skid mark? So, 40 miles an hour is the speed. So, we are going to put that in for S. And we're going to say 40 equals the square root of 30 and then parentheses 0.6D. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. And 40 squared is 1,600. Now, I've got this 30 and then parentheses 0.6 and then D. Well, 30 times 0.6 is just 18. Put it on my calculator. So I have 1,600 equals 18D. I'm going to divide both sides by 18. And I get D equals 88.88. .88. Number 13, solve. Check for extraneous solutions. I have x time, or 4 times x to the 3 fourths equals 32. Now, I want to follow the order of operations. The order of operations says I have to take care of any exponents before multiplication, which means I can't, to solve, I'm going to go backwards. So if, is there any adding or subtracting? No. Is there any multiplying or dividing? Yes, I'm going to divide by 4. Now I have x to the 3 fourths equals 8. Now I'm going to raise both sides to the 4 thirds. That way this will cancel off. And we'll have x. Now you can either do this in your calculator or your head. The third root of 8 is 2. 2 to the 4th power is 16. All right, letter B, going backwards on PEMDAS. There is some adding or subtracting I can do. I can add 20. So I have 6x to the 2 fifths equals 24. All right, well, now multiplying or divide. Yeah, I can do that. I can divide by 6, and that would give me x to the 2 fifths equals 4. To get rid of the two-fifths, I'm going to raise each side to the five-halves. And again, by calculator or by hand, I know that the square root, you know, you can just type in 4 to the power of parentheses, 5 over 2. Or, I know the square root of 4 is 2, and I know that 2 to the fifth is 32. Now, because I took a square root as part of my answer... And I'm solving. I have to remember, whenever I take an even root, not an odd root, this one's okay. Whenever I take an even root, it's going to be plus or minus. So it's going to be plus or minus 2 to the fifth, which is going to be plus or minus 32. All right, letter C. Here... I have some a square root. So the I can't really unlock this square root. I cannot square. This is math jail. Bad. No, no, no. Before I can square both sides, I have to subtract 6. Now I have the square root of 5x minus 7 equals negative 2. Now I can square both sides because the because the square root is isolated. If I square both sides, I get 5x minus 7 equals 4. 
I'm going to add 7 to both sides. That would give me 11. And divide by 5. Now I am going to check this one. Watch what happens. If I do, I'm to check. So I'm going to go, all right, well, the square root of 5 times 11 fifths minus 7. Well, 5 times, or plus 6 at the end. 5 times 11 fifths is going to be 11. 11 minus 7 is 4. And the square root of 4 would be 2. And 2 plus 6 is not 4. Therefore, 11 fifths is not my answer, and I have no solution. Whenever I have a, a square root in my equation, it's going to be one of those keys for me to check. Can't take the square root of a negative number, can't have a log of a negative number, can't divide by zero. These are the situations where we want to check. Now, cube roots I'm not so worried about because I can take the cube root of a negative number. So the fact that I have the cube root of x minus 18 equals negative 6 is not a big deal. I cube both sides. I get, let's see, 6, negative 6 to the third is 216. So I have negative 216. I'm going to add 18 to both sides. And I'm going to get x equals negative 198. And that works. If we plug it back in, it'll work great. See? Do, do, do. And that gives me negative 216. And I grab my calculator, and the cube root of 216 is indeed negative 6. Yay! All right. Number 14. Match each function to the graph. Oop. Here we go. Now, you could use your calculator, and that's totally fine, but I'm going to use what I know about the functions. A. Well, A is the only one that's a cube function. It's not a cube root. I know that a cube... Whoa. I know that a cube root looks like this. I know that a square root looks like this. A cube is the inverse of a cube root, so it's going to look like this. The only one that looks like that is letter is 3. So A matches with graph 3. B is the square root of x moved up 2. So I'm looking for this graph move up 2. That's V. Letter C is the square root graph moved left 2, because it's plus 2 inside. So that's going to match with graph 1. D is the cube root moved right 1 and up 2. Right 1 and up 2 is graph 4. Well, obviously this is graph 2, but it's moved left 2 and down 1, and sure enough, left 2, down 1 is graph 2.